Yeah. Let me get a little of that head nod in there. Let me, let me turn it back up just for a bit. It's your boy Cosmonian, Cosmon Cal, man. Your hostess with the mostest. Stay burning like toasters. Every time you see the butterfly vortex, you know what's coming next, man. And I'm back from the atmospheric heavens like I left something, man. We about to finish this off. Great build. A lot of info. I, I told you I've been doing this for years. You dig what I'm talking about? So I was just not doing lives. You dig what I'm talking about? So I'm bringing out a lot of information and I just want to show why I believe what I believe and why I know what I know. You dig what I'm talking about? And we here to share this with y'all. You dig what I'm talking about? Um, uh, Real quick, right? Before we get into it, remember... Uh, if y'all remember the last um, Jehovah Chronicles. Oh, first of all, let's get this understood. This Jehovah Chronicles number 14. This number 14. Um, Nimrod part four. This is the final battle. This is the final war. Og versus Nimrod, right? But remember, uh, we got into a very interesting uh, character named Lathot, right? He was one of the uh, 100,000 giants that came and fought on King Og's side, right? Remember, uh, he, uh, if you remember, it said Lathot bred these animals, these certain animals, right? Okay, so I wanted to uh, show you the correlation that is also in other book in, in other books. You dig what I'm talking about? Now remember, Uval, right? Uval the giant, who was the father of Lesta, who was King Og's wife, right? Taught Lamech the ways of the Leviathan or the great sea beast. You dig what I'm talking about? Um. I want to get into that, but remember the thought. Let's let's go back and read on the thought real quick, right? The thought with the red hair who ran mad in the forest under the power of many dark ones. The thought, listen, who mixed animals and creatures into new beasts with the power ball of the earth. So he's doing some type of gene splicing and genetics, right? But this is where it got interesting because I remembered this from somewhere. Lathot, who placed rods, listen, in the sight of the animals in the gutters or the waterways, right? So that they would mate strangely by the rods. Lathot, who would not breed the animals that were feeble, for the feeble were for eating. But the strong were for war warfare. Lathot, whose unnatural beasts were both a blessing and a curse from ball of the earth, right? Remember I said, man, that, that reminds me of something, right? Um, This is, let me show y'all this. This is the book of Lamech of Cain, right? Remember, Cain had a great, 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 three, four times great grandson named Lamech. Cain had one. Not only Seth, Cain. Let me show y'all this real quick before we get into this. Well, I'll get into it later. But I just wanted to show you where that sounded familiar to to me and where and, and why I had to go back into the book of Lamech because this is where I read it. Now look where I look 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 what it say. 
first, do I want to get in the Uval? Yeah, let me get in the Uval because this is all one thing, right? Right, this is where Lamech of Cain meets Uval. Remember, Uval is one of the giants that came and fought too, right? And look what it says. And Lamech met Uval the giant while walking the desolation of the land. Uval's ways, listen, were tender. Remember, Uval ate men and went to war. and He was a vicious, vicious dude. But compared to dudes like Nimrod or dudes like Og, he was a softy. You did what I'm talking about. And these dudes was pure evil. I'm talking about Uval and Lama. Watch this, though. Uval's ways were tender, gentle, and delicate. And with Lamak, Uval the giant was both kind and humble. Uval's peaceful ways were different. Other giants of the land than other giants of the land. Because of his nature, Uval and Lama soon became bound together in close friendship. Uval the giant loved Lama as much as he did his own life. You did what I'm talking about. Let's get into this real quick. Oh, Kevin Sears, Vortexian in the house. Yare Yadred, peace, love, and light to the righteous Nirvani and gods and goddesses. Man, created gang gang is in the house, man. You did what I'm talking about. Share the live out there. You did what I'm talking about. Share the screen. You did what I'm talking about. Tell your homies to come on in. You dig what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. We're going to get into it, right? So I showed you the, the, the connection with Uval back to Lamech, right? And now we let me, Uval teaches uh, Lamech how to command the Leviathan, right? But he even goes on to breed them. Now, let me show you why these rods and what they say about this thing, right? Hold on. Let me. Um... Now, Lamak then took fresh cut branches from the poplar, a.k.a. A gopher wood. Lama took fresh cut branches from gopher wood and blank trees and poplar trees and gopher wood and made white strips on them, peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branch. And Lama then placed the peeled branches in the watering pit, just like they said Lathot did with these with these great beasts also right remember and Lama placed the peel branches in the watering pit so they would be directly in front of the rahab leviathan rahab right let's show let me show my screen um rahab right It means uh, broad or louder. I mean, uh, large or spacious. Rahab. So they call him the Rahab Leviathan. He must have been a beast, a beast, a beast. You dig what I'm talking about? Let me share my screen with y'all real quick. Because remember they said, Lama then took fresh cut branches from the poplar. Right? Also remember... Lamech and Uval are in the city of Enoch. Where is the city of Enoch? Bronze Yog in the house. Kevin Sears in the house. Sherlyn, Sherlyn Shabar in the house. You dig what I'm talking about? Thank you everybody for coming through, man. We're going to try to make this succinct and quick. Knock this Nimrod out, man. This is some way out information, man. Way out information. But remember, they're talking about gopher wood, right? I want to show y'all. Let me show y'all my screen. 
Make sure y'all can see the screen. I want to make sure y'all can see the screen. So a simple Google search. Where did the... Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go back. Where does gopher wood come from, right? Where is it indigenous or native to, right? Look what we find here. A dedicated team of scientists from the Atlanta Botanical Garden and local volunteers in the Florida Panhandle is racing to save 750 or so gopher wood trees that remain in the U.S., according to the earther. Religious scholars have long searched for the tree that Noah used to construct his so-called ark. The gopher wood is indigenous to America. So that begs to ask the question, when I tell you that the city of Enoch is T.O. Enoch Lan, or the city of Enoch in Mexico, it start to make a little sense, but then they gonna see, you know, you're gonna have them Bible thumpers. You dig what I'm talking about? Uh, you're gonna have the Bible thumpers and all this. Well, the, well, the gopher wood is a cypress. Gopher wood is a cypress tree. Well, is it? Let's go and look and see where is the cypress. <laughs> originate and where is it indigenous to where are cypress trees most common where the cypress grows cypress trees grow mainly along north america's southern coastlines where they have easy access to swampy wet soil and full sunlight however some types prosper along the eastern portion of the united states ranging from delaware to florida so it don't matter, nigga. Both of these places, both of these trees are indigenous to America. And I'm telling you, the city of Enoch is T.O. Enoch line of central Mexico. Right? And Lamech then peeled the peeled branches in the watering pit so that they would be directly in front of Rahab, the great or the big. You dig what I'm talking about? The broad. You dig what I'm talking about? Leviathan. When they came to drink. When the Rahab Leviathan came to drink, they made it in front of the branches, just like Lathot. Right? Right? And they bore young that had horns and had spikes that were sharp to the touch. Lama then gave the Rahabab Leviathan offspring to Uval. Didn't we just read that Uval raises these animals up, these large scale beasts and all this? Well, Uval taught Lama. Lama, you know, out of love for his boy, turns it's like breeding a dog, right? Your dog turn you you get a uh, a dog from your boy, right? You got a female dog and you get a, a a male dog from your boy. You breed them up. You get some good puppies because that's your boy. Let's say your dog have eight puppies because that's your boy. You give him three of them, huh? He take three. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these five. Or here, you take these five. I'm gonna keep these three. Right. He gave the Leviathan offspring to Uval, and all were born afterwards. And all that were born afterwards. As payment for Uval teaching Lamech how to tame the Rahab Leviathan. Boy, I'm going to show y'all some stuff today. Because we're going to put it, we know where we at in time. Right? I'm going to show y'all some stuff today. That's right, Sister Lashonda. North America, indigenous, right here. 
You know what I mean? Let me light my splipper, a splipper ting. Now, we gonna get also right in right into um uh the uh gigantomachy real quick i just want to give you a visual right of what's going on during this this war you dig what i'm talking about i just want to give you a quick visual let me turn down the the the, the beach real quick we're gonna get right to it Hold on. Let me share my screen with y'all. Cause my man, we coming from the, the atmosphere in heavens with this one. You dig what I'm talking about? This this going to be a nice build, man. Dig this. This is the Gigantamachy. Remember, we had the Titantamachy, right? We had um, uh, uh, um, the, the gods against the Titans. But remember, there's another war. There's actually four wars uh, remembered in Greek history. But this is the other great war, which is the gods versus the giants. Huh? Watch this. Let me share my screen with y'all. Let us go. Gaia, the Mother Earth, still wanted to have her revenge against the Olympian gods. After all, these beings had imprisoned the Titans in Tartarus. The Mother Earth gave birth to a powerful offspring, using Uranus's castration blood. These very powerful beings would be known as giants. Notice they always Before, talk about some castration. Army, and their only objective was to dethrone the gods who inhabited Mount Olympus. The Olympian gods readied themselves to face these outstanding foes. The clash between gods and giants began, but the gods appeared powerless since their most fierce blows could not defeat the giants. That was when the goddess Hera prophesied that only one method could defeat the giants and, much to her own repugnance, the prophecy said that only with the help of a mighty mortal wearing a lion's fur, the gods could defeat the giants. There was only one man on Earth who fit that description, <coughs> Hercules. Zeus ordered a female to find Hercules so he would join the Olympian gods. The mighty giants would remain unbeatable as long as they were in touch with where they were born, nearby Thrace. They started to stack imposing stones in an attempt to reach the heavenly abode. But while the giants were focused on defending their edification, they were stunned by a scary howl. Without looking backwards, they ran away, but they did not know that it was only the howls of Selenus's donkey, which brought his pupil Dionysus Look at these massive to join the battle. With a reckless courage that only a totally intoxicated individual would have, Selenus chased the giants with his unique horse riding. He felt like a champion riding a white horse. Realizing that they had been tricked, the giants reorganized themselves and went to fight once more but the time gained by Selenus was crucial for the arrival of Hercules. Hercules slaughtered one of the giants with an arrow, but the ground would grant a new life to the giant every time. The gods realized... If you understand, Hercules is... only way they could defeat them. The mighty Hercules on. grabbed the giant Antaeus with a bear's embrace. Hercules, right? This is how you can date what's going on, what time, right? Hercules is uh, the sun in the sign of Leo and precedes the time of Aries or the Ram. So right where we say we about to be, right, is right where the hell we at. 22nd arc cycle after the creation of man. Look it up. Race and carried him to another territory, exterminating him right there with his club. The giant Hercules is not necessary a man, okay? Hera, 
Kokopo is struck by an arrow from Eros. Notwithstanding the injury, the giant kept launching. There's a spiritual, astrological, and cosmological nature desire. to all this that's going on. Creature with one of his most powerful raids. In the meantime, the god Ares fought bravely against the giants, but was brought to his knees nevertheless. Still, he was rescued by Apollo and Hercules, who shot down another giant with their bows. The gods were weakening the giants and readied them for Hercules to strike the final blow. And so the giants were dropped one by one. Dionysus overthrew the giants with his Thrysus, while Hecate set them on fire with her torches. Athena hurled a great rock against the giant brain that tried to escape by the sea. This huge rock would become the island of Sicily on the Italian peninsula. Hades also took part in the battle, making use of his pitchfork and lending his cap, which granted invisibility to Hermes, who invisibly ran at high speed among the giants, striking blows with his caduceus. Finally, Zeus triumphantly paraded in his chariot over the corpses of the fallen giants, and Nike, the goddess of victory, stood next to him. Major honors were dedicated to the great warrior Hercules. Without him, the giants would have thrown the universe back into chaos. All right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Stop sharing. <coughs> okay. All right. We're going to get right into it. You dig what I'm talking about? I want to share this with you because I think this is always necessary. If your God or your information can't be put on a timeline to where you can start proving these things in historical times, you dig what I'm talking about? Um, you must then go back to the draw board. You dig what I'm talking about? You, you got to go back to the drawing board. Um, let me share this. I think this is always. Right here, right? We're talking about two different times. We're talking about the 17th arc cycle after the creation of man. Right? And we're talking about the 22nd arc cycle after the creation of man. Okay. Two different times. Two different wars. Remember, one is against a titan. One is against a giant. Okay. All right. Now, let's get... Now, Ball put on the... Uh, I mean, uh, King Og put on the whole armor of God yesterday you dig what i'm talking about we read that where ball put on the armor of god you know what i mean let me throw uh let me get my banners popping uh cosmoni yeah y'all hear that knocking in the background see la shalom in the house Stephanie Randall in the house. My sister LaShonda. Listen, me and my sister LaShonda going to put a master class together on y'all boys. I got some stuff. Listen. Listen. It's some stuff going on in this world. If you not open your mind, not open, you going to miss it. You dig what I'm talking about? I'm talking about angelic beings coming back speaking to your loved ones breaking it down for them Boy, listen man we gonna bring you dig what i'm talking about we gonna bring that out oh blessings stephanie randall in the hit house created gang gang nirvani and goddess you dig what i'm talking about 
she brew 144 that's my little brook that's my little brooklyn midget sister and she can fight too you know she from brooklyn she can fight you dig what i'm talking about them little ones be mean too she probably got a little man complex <laughs> you dig what i'm talking about bless up bless up to the creator gang in the house man hey just want y'all to know creator just say i didn't say this creator said y'all gonna become supreme in all the world man we just the first fruits like my boy like my boy Sila said we just the first niggas to touch it. we about to clear away all the bullshit no gods no lords no saviors <laughs> but now we got a good visual about what's going on right we gonna get directly into the hundred thousand giant whoa let's break it down y'all you dig what i'm talking about and war broke out between og and nimrod's kingdom og and his giants marched across the desert that is damnation toward the circumcised nephilim and the circumcised nephilim and nimrod marched to meet them and the uncircumcised raphaim released the elephants rhinoceros and great beast of old and the creeping things onto the field of battle and the circumcised nephilim brought no beast whatsoever mm, that's interesting they didn't bring no pack animals no you know so just so y'all know where i'm at we was reading from the lost book of king og right but uh, you gotta go get this one too the books of og enoch and the giants remember they mentioned the, the book of the giants wars of the giants in the in the bible go get you some you can be reading this too but for right now let your big bro break it down for you man so the raphaim fought the war and acted wisely concerning it and each giant girded his weapon of war and fought according to all that ball of the earth moon sun stars celestial bodies and mott had told them each of the uncircumcised raphaim killed a hundred or more of the circumcised nephilim there was there has been no violence listen to this there has been no violence likened to the hundred thousand giant war before or since now you know we didn't seen um uh uh desolation in america we didn't seen uh uh the reconquistas the uh the inquisitions you dig what i'm talking about we didn't seen some horrible stuff in the name of uh, many times in the name of jesus the most horrible stuff been done in the name of a god on this on the face of this planet you dig what i'm talking about um they say there has been no violence no war likened to the hundred thousand giant war before or ever since and water began to fall from the sky and all who marched were wet and their weapons were made heavy because of it the uncircumcised raphaim whose minds were full of violence were driven on by death of the moon child and their hated in their hatred of circumcision which strengthened their violent resolve the circumcised nephilim also had minds of violence and anger about the moon child worth going to war over and the water mixed with the ground of the battlefield of of the fields of battle which were called damnation and the mud became thick and slowed them some the uncircumcised walked forward to the circumcised and the circumcised walked forward to the uncircumcised the raphaim walked on upon the field of battle which is called damnation as if in the midst of a sea 
in the waters fell upon them and to their right hand and to their left the giants carried their swords axes drivers and chasers and lances and led their beast of old to kill on the field of battle the fountains of the deep opened also and the windows of heaven opened wider and rain fell listen and rain fell unrestrained upon the field of battle this is exactly what it say in the bible what was it 10th day second month uh or was it third month seventh day that's what i think it is third month second month seventh day third month seventh day it began to rain 40 days and 40 nights that happened at the time of the thousand giant war this is why creators say this type of evil can't come back on this mug we got to get you niggas up out of here and what he do send big dog a through smashing you dig what i'm talking about listen listen the giant uh the fountains of the deep open also and the windows of listen to what's happening i'm not making no mistake this is the great flood because ain't they what they're saying what's happening with this listen the fountains of the deep opened also and the windows of heaven opened wider and rain fell unrestrained upon the field of battle and the waters returned to the earth continually and they were not abated this was the very beginning of the 40 night and day rain prophecy listen that had been foretold by the priests of Baal of the sun who were as follows help us they got the people name help us dentalian balak citri person and dakarabin wow the mud then became as thick and cold darkness and swallowed at the raphaim feet as they marched the anger and hatred grew within king og's army against the uh, the circumcised nephilim for ball of the moon sent his wrath in this war against his circumcised nation ball of the moon hardened king og's heart so that he would not lose the war who else hardened what other god hardened a heart wait till you find out that it was literally ball who hardened the heart of the pharaoh new god aka the pharaoh of bible ball did this too ball who hardened king og's heart is the same deity who hardened uh um almost the first aka new god aka Elias. He hardened his heart just like um biblical god hardened pharaoh's heart so happens that's the same guy nugan Elias, all that's the same guy but look ball did it he has done this before you can tell who the gods is irregardless of the name by what they do ain't that how we tell what a thing is you must look at what it produces by what it does how it does what it does you dig what i'm talking about so look he hardened king og's heart so that he would not lose the war this is the same deity the same exact deity that hardened uh the heart of um pharaoh wow right ball of the moon when strengthened king then strengthened king og and his giants to take the plunder and to strip off the spoil from the temples and the dwellings and to trample the circumcised nephilim like beggars in the streets <clears throat> 
Now Kotos blew the beast horn and his army of 2,000 giants began to chant saying, the battle belongs to King Og. Kotos, Kotos's army then blew their horns and all 100,000 of Og's army continued the chant. The blackening ground shook and grew wetter still as a marsh or a riverbed. The field of battle became heavy as when one is sent to me with heavy tidings and the rain poured with more violence upon the earth. King Og's army continued and the great beast of old marched with them. The dark ones leapt from uncircumcised Raphaim to uncircumcised Raphaim. The, oh, the dark, let me read that again. The dark ones leapt from uncircumcised Raphaim to uncircumcised Raphaim. We also see that in Owaspi, right? Where the uh, the warrior angels, angelic angels are literally inspiring men to war on the earth as they do it. Even Constantine uh, was showed the sign of the Kai in a row in the, in, in the sky by the false Christ Luamong, which inspired him to then go on and beat Maximinus at the Battle of Milverian Bridge, 312 AD. You dig what I'm talking about, which uh in which uh at that time Baal was thrown into hell by Thoth, uh Thoth Gabriel, aka Allah of Islam fame. Um <clears throat> right. So you see the spirits jumping back to back, Raphaim the Raphaim, inspiring these niggas to madness. You dig what I'm talking about? Just imagine like a dark cloud just flowing through these you dig what i'm talking about past the bodies and stuff you know what i mean the dark ones covered the uncircumcised raphaim with a large whirlwind that circled and climbed into the rain above them the sky then cracked with lightning and thunder was heard throughout both kingdoms the rain poured onto the field of battle as water pours from a pitcher. The dark ones floated across the water. What? Between the armies. Varus' dark ones went across and entered the circumcised Nephilim, learned of their battle secrets and returned to him. Briarios' dark ones followed who entered the circumcised Nephilim and confused their ways so that they wounded one another. He got them to turn on themselves. Amok's dark ones went across the desert of a damnation and wounded and disemboweled the circumcised Nephilim. Cacus's dark ones, the broke, the broke that broke the bones of many of the circumcised Nephilim on the front lines of the field of battle. Gaiges, who curved limbs, then conjured a powerful dark one, which crossed to the circumcised Nephilim and entered Mullen, the Nephilim, who was a mighty warrior in Nimrod's kingdom. Mullen, another guy we never really heard of, or Mulin, could be Mulin, M-U-L-L-I-N, Mullen, or you see what I'm saying? Then turned, Mullen then turned and killed 1,000 of his own circumcised Nephilim while under the power of Guy Jesus, dark one. Anybody want to bet Guy Jesus, Ganges? Remember, it also said when he, uh, when he, um, um, get under the uh inspiration of his dark one it turns him into an elephant huh like ganesha you dig what i'm talking about where bronze yogi at you dig what i'm talking about he know what i'm talking about my boy sila know what i'm talking about everybody gonna get here we all advance at different times man you dig what i'm talking about Everybody gonna get here, but why we while I I'm what would I hold on to all this information for? So I'm gonna start just telling y'all what I know. You dig what I'm talking about? Guy G's of curved limbs, then con oh, oh, oh we read that one. We read that one. 
uh, 39. <clears throat> then Kressel, whose dark ones made his army invisible, led the charge to the circumcised Nephilim. Kressel led with his army, whom his dark ones made invisible, so that all that could be seen was splashing of their feet and all that could be heard was the chanting the battle belongs to king uh the battle belongs to king oh uh, the battle belongs to king imagine you you looking out right it's raining i mean raining hard to where a desert is starting to look like a marsh like a riverbed you dig what I'm talking about? And you just see, or you don't see nobody. It's lightning and thunder and it's smoke and darkness. You dig what I'm talking about? And But all you see is splashing. A thousand splashing. Look like fish jumping out to the water. The water just jumping up in the air. And all you hear is, the battle belongs to king. Oh, the battle belongs to king. Oh, oh. You can't see nothing, and then all you see is your homeboy just get his head cut off. Whoa. Ain't even nothing there. You like, what the? His head just hit the ground. Next thing you know, you get ran through. Uh, and you can't even see who's stabbing you. And all the time they saying, the battle belongs to King. Oh, the battle belongs to King. Oh, oh man, that would be terrifying. And they got a, they got a saying where these giants just because they were bigger and massive they could talk with these big booming voices that could like like freeze you it'll scare you but literally shockwave you like oh you know what i mean they could roar at you she, who was that in that was uh they was in egypt and that was judah didn't they say Judah roared like a lion and they heard it through the whole city? <sighs> Listen. Now Kressel's invisible army attacked the circumcised Nephilim, throat and groin, and divided the circumcised Nephilim battle line in half. They didn't even know who they was fighting. Do you dig what I'm talking about? Could you imagine you boxing, you in the boxing ring, and a nigga just disappear on you? He just, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> he put some food pops on, you can't even see him. You dig what I'm talking about? You done signed up for a boxing match and this nigga disappeared. And he beating you together. Beep, 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 beep. That's a hell of an advantage, man. Um he said he split the battle line in half. The circumcised Nephilim were filled with great fear because of Kressel's invisible army and cried out, I hear the uncircumcised, but I see no one. I bet they were scared. Kressel's army then relentlessly killed the most circumcised Nephilim in the 100,000 giant war until their dark ones left them. Uh-oh. Look how the Jews you do you. Sold you all these dreams. Got you up out of there. Remember, them and them wasn't no ho. These wasn't no suckers. Even Og looked up to this nigga. Wanted to be like him. Was jealous of him. Envied him. You dig what I'm talking about? So Nimrod wasn't no sucker. You dig what I'm talking about? <laughs> But look how the spirit do them. Look at how dark Druid is doing. Get them out there. Ah, oh, they they hyped up. And then soon as they in that, soon as they think shit's sweet. Mm, leave you out there stinking. Ain't that how they do you? Now Sandar, who did not respect Anak, the keeper of the bodies, stood by the stones that the Raphaim had collected the day before as a memorial unto them. Sandar then commanded the strongest 50 in his army of 500 giants to join him, and they threw the stones 
over Cressel and the uncircumcised Rephaim, the stones fell and crushed many of the circumcised Nephilim in the rain. Sandar, whose dark ones spoke and turned through him, then led his army onto the field of battle to kill and defile the wounded. Then Verak, the perfect, whose visage was beautiful, led his army of 500 uncircumcised Raphaim into battle. After many of his uncircumcised Raphaim had been killed, Verak looked to the sun and called out, have I not served you with my move with my moving large voice, O ball of the sun? Didn't I tell y'all about these booming voices? And all the uh and don't matter where you look for the history about giants, it always speak about this booming voice. You dig what I'm talking about? Show me your hatred for the for the circumcised and rocks of fire fell from heaven and the it, with the rain mm. crushing many circumcised nephilim king og stood at the entrance of the battlefield and with his voice of destruction that the entire field of the battle heard commanding all giants with floating beasts shall ride forward into battle now nimrod with his with his army of circumcised giants did not have floating beasts or animals of warfare though his army were as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude the ranks of the uncircumcised raphaim warring in the rain and muck then killed their closest nephilim so the ranks could be open now the gar the ground shook as the uncircumcised Raphaim connected with their floating beasts and galloped forward into battle, eviscerating circumcised Nephilim as they went. Arrows and swords did not penetrate or harm them. Well, we know why the ground shaking for real. We know why the, the ground shaking for real. That vortexian barrier ape is putting up on that thing. He not playing with y'all. Okay. Where we at? <clears throat> 48. Skyron connected with his floating beast and became as a hairy elephant. What's a hairy elephant called? Anybody know what a hairy elephant is called? A mammoth. Skyron, the blood drinker, entered the battle with 500 giants and many trained beasts. The trained beasts gored and stood upon the circumcised Nephilim, pinning them to the ground until the, giant, until the giants, under Skyron's command, killed them or they drowned. Skyron killed and mauled. 400 circumcised Nephilim that day. Then Maya lifted a mountainside. What? Then Maya lifted a mountainside and threw it upon the circumcised Nephilim, killing 300 of them. Maya then connected with this floating beast and became as a rhinoceros with many horns. Maya who while connected screamed could a floating beast be a be a spirit it's a spirit right but when they say a floating beast he come from not necessarily on the ground but from the lower heavens could it be an angelic being with a flying apparatus. We know angels ain't got wings. What if this is what allows them to uh, shape shift? Yasan L, yep. Shape shift. 
But we know man is always inspired. What if they call it a beast? Right? Because he's so negative. And he connecting to this floating beast. Could his beast, when they say when he connect with the floating beast, could his beast be his religion? Huh? Religion is a thing done. You dig what I'm talking about? It'll teach you to do things a certain way. That is a religion. Just like marching and chanting is to an army. That is religion to an army. Hmm. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just interesting. You dig what I'm talking about? It's just something to let you think on a little bit, right? But the niggas, they said the nigga lifted up my own set. Um, Meyer then connected with this floating beast and became as a rhinoceros with many horns. Meyer, who while connected, screamed a whip for the beast, a bridle for the Nephilim, and a rod for Nimrod's back. Meyer's army of 500 Circumcised Nephilim followed him and slaughtered scores of circumcised Nephilim with no fear as butchers slaughtered dull beasts for meat. And Maya and his army were responsible for a great, a very great slaughter for their fail of the circumcised 1,000 giants. Called the drunk connected with this floating beast and became as a bad Korg, with his army of 500 giants clawed and torn to the ground, digging under the rain before the circumcised Nephilim and created a mud pit that the circumcised Nephilim fell into and were killed. And the waters of the mud pit were so full of blood that Korg remarked, do not look at the field of battle or its pits when it is red. When it gives its color at your feet, when it moves itself a, 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 a right lest at the end of for at the end of you forget to bite like a serpent or sting like an adder. When it moves itself a right lest at the end you forget to bite like a serpent or sting like an adder. He's like, don't be worried about, don't look at that shit down there. Don't be. Don't be worried about what's going on down there. Because you might be slipping and the nigga catch you lacking. Keep fighting. Like my boy Yasso Fitz say, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Corb and his army then held they that had not yet died under the mud drowning them in the rain for the circumcised nephilim offended all who believed in ball of the moon earth sun stars and celestial bodies and mocked it was better for them that the raphaim's fist were hanged about their necks and that they were drowned in the depth of the muck then arkrit who sharpened his fingernails, pressed forward with his army of 500. Arkrit connected with his floating beast and became as a lion. Arkrit remained close to the ground and tore at the flesh of the genitals of the circumcised Nephilim that attacked. Arkrit's army followed suit and the entire melee was concerned with removing the loins of the circumcised Nephilim on the field of the battle. So they just at these boys' private parts. Crazy. And they cut at the linen breeches the circumcised Nephilim used to cover their nakedness. From the loins unto the thighs, the Raphaim hacked and assaulted the and severed circumcised members were to be eaten or cast to the dogs.
by the falling waters. And the circumcised Nephilim cried out as they all felt the second great pain in their members. The first being the loss of their foreskins. Arkrit and his army cut at their genitals in all manners with knives and lancets till the blood gushed and mixed with the waters. Ag, who had no connection to any spiritual things. Because see, they talking about the connection with a floating beast, but it's a spiritual thing. Huh? Ag, who had no connection to any spiritual things whatsoever, and who followed not the customs of Og's land, Ag, who was his own brother, who brought nets for fishing onto the field of battle, swung the nets into the water and secured many circumcised Nephilim. Ag's army of 5,000 giants then attacked and killed all 700 of the circumcised Nephilim that were under Ag's nets. Damn, he caught 700 of them. Well, I... Okay, I... It's an army doing this. Okay. Upon witnessing the circumcised Nephilim, upon witnessing how many of their brethren had fallen to Ag's nets, focused all of their attention upon Ag. Ag then became hesitant and inactive on the field of battle because he couldn't connect. As one who was confused, Nimrod's circumcised army threw large stones at Ag and stunned them further. When the circumcised Nephilim saw that Ag was useless, they ran forward and killed him. And Ag and his, was pierced and besieged by spears in the stomach and hacked with axes at the shoulders by both Andrus and Ophir. Ophir, Ophir? The circumcised generals in Nimrod's army until he died. Interesting, interesting, interesting. It's getting interesting. Now, Uthoth. Now remember, listen, this Uthoth, the black Raphaim, right? Whose dark ones visibly rested upon his shoulders. We ain't proud of being evil. You think what I'm talking about? We're not saying that. But it's just so amazing to hear it. And once you know this type of information, man, it just opens up your mind to so many possibilities. You dig what I'm talking about? Because you can see yourself in the mythos. Dope. You dig what I'm talking about? Hold on. Cause mine, I'm right back. That's right. That's right. Now, you thought the black Raphaim, whose dark ones visibly rested upon his shoulders and whispered to him to enter battle. Uthoth then called down fire from Ball of the Sun and great plumes of fire consumed hundreds of the uncircumcised Nephilim in the rain, and the dark ones were scattered. There was so much fire and chaos on the field of battle that the uncircumcised Nephilim reasoned with themselves, saying, if this giant can call down fire from ball of the sun in the rain, <laughs> that's what I said, then he must be ball's heir. Come let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours. That's what I'm saying. Man, this nigga calling down fire in the rain. He said he got to be Ball's heir. This got to be him. But he a black, listen, he a black Raphaim. How could he be Ball's heir? If ball ain't black. <laughs> the dark 
can you listen? The more you go in history, the deeper you go in history. I, it's not a, it's not a black and white thing, man. But you know, for a people who have whose history has been oppressed and held back. You dig what I'm talking about? To finally get a glimpse and to find that it was you in all them stories. Could have been. It was you. They was calling God the whole time. Huh? You seeing it? This why, this why, this why Jehovah's kingdom is coming now, y'all. We gonna be some of the first of the first. Really, some of the first of the of the of the, of the melanated faith is to do it. You know, there was there was other brothers who came before us. You did what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Shout to them. You did what I'm talking about. Ain't no need for me to put their names out there. But shout to y'all. You did what I'm talking about. Y'all had this stuff before many of us. But when you got it, you ain't sharing. You did what I'm talking about? I know. I got the way. You know. Everybody got to be woke up. That's what I know. See, when you come up in the hood, right, and you come up poke and broke, one thing you learn to do is share. Now you you gonna be you gonna you gonna you could be the greedy type, but if you got a mama and daddy and cousins and uncles and all you you got you gonna share. That's for sure. You did what I'm talking about. And so, what do I look like holding on to this information, knowing I'm a, a weirdo, and I look at shit you do, <laughs> you know what I mean? I always been the black sheep. I was always the thug. I was always different. You dig what I'm talking about? I was always saucy. Forever. I've always been that way. You dig what I'm talking about? I wasn't no sucker then. Why would I be a sucker now, man? Try to get this info and hold on to it. No, you give it away free. You know what I mean? Why would I want to be the only millionaire in my circle? I think Jay-Z said it one of the best. He say you dig what I'm talking about? I make my man's millionaire so my man's can be crutches. If I ever fall, they can be crutches. communal living right ain't gonna be no high no low everybody doing for everybody man you not there is nothing you not gonna need you, there's nothing you're gonna need because everything will be supplied by everybody who there and everybody working for the same goal because everybody got one leader only the creator let me tell you something black folks listen whatever you do don't matter whatever you think you is you about to get out here and do if the creator ain't first he ain't the focus the leader the number one ideal the highest ideal that you can perceive going into whatever it is that you doing i guarantee you one thing you will fail. Put creator first. Let's get back to some of this fucked up shit though. Right? So they saying, look, this nigga can call down fire in the middle of the damn rain. We ain't never seen rain like this. This got to be balls air it's got to be that guy you dig what i'm talking about the canaanite god ball he was also uh inspiring um the greeks the romans the gauls the britons 
Ireland, Sweden. He Odin. He's Cerninus. He's also Zeus. You dig what I'm talking about? Okay. Got to put this false gods list together for y'all, man. I think this is going to be a game changer. You dig what I'm talking about? And Because I think the book can turn into a movie. You dig what I'm talking about? Damn, we good chilling at work. Spiritual light. Slave master on his head. But he's still getting that Jaja first. You see what I'm saying? Still putting Jaja first. And the uncircumcised Nephilim focused upon you, Thoth, and his army of 1,000 giants. The circumcised Nephilim killed and wounded you, Thoth's army, until none could be protected by, by him anymore. The rains continued to fall, and the ground was covered in mud and water to a giant's knees. Hmm. You, Thoth, saw the uncircumcised surrounding him and rejoiced to the heavens and to Baal of the sun that dwells within them. Now Baal of the sun looked down favorably upon you, Thoth, and a voice from the sky spoke. Uh-oh, look at Baal. Woe to the circumcised inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For Baal of the sun is come down unto you, having great wrath because he knows that they have but a short time. As soon as the voice had spoken, a funnel of fire crossed through the field of battle, which wounded and consumed hundreds of circumcised Nephilim. In the rain, Yuthof, who was surrounded, reached into the waters by his legs and pulled forth the skull of a great beast of old. Huh? Who else was fighting with a uh, an animal head? Was that Samson? You thought then swung the skull as one swings a hammer, shattering and breaking the bodies of 50 circumcised Nephilim with it. Boy, this nigga, you thought was no hope. Annie from the cut. Good Tommy and boy. You dig what I'm talking about? Out there putting the dukes on these boys. Huh? He said he swung it as one swings a hammer, shattering, breaking the bodies of 50 circumcised Nephilim with it. You thought was then killed as Shax, the uncircumcised Nephilim. Huh. So they had Nephilim who were uncircumcised. I told you the Nephilim are the Raphaim. The Raphaim are the Nephilim. But that's interesting. Ugdorf was then killed by Shax. The uncircumcised Nephilim ran a spear through his neck. The battle then went heavily against Itagun, who was possessed and spoke unintelligibly because of the dark ones within him. Through the rain, the circumcised Nephilim uh, archers hit him in the center of his army, and he was badly wounded by the archers. Then Itigan said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and pierce me through with it. Otherwise, these uncircumcised will come and pierce me through and make sport of me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was afraid he was talking to a dark one and not Itigan. So Itigan took his sword and fell on it in the water of the field of the battle. Botus the creator of strange fires, then called out to ball of the earth and 42 female bears entered the field of battle and they mauled in the circumcised Nephilim, killing until they themselves were slaughtered. When the circumcised Nephilim saw that it was Bodus and his dark ones that besieged them so, they cut through his army to get at him. Bodus' army fought mightily to protect him and Bodus was cannibalized while still alive on the field of battle by the uncircumcised and then beheaded, or by, I th think it meant to say, by the circumcised and then beheaded. 
Gantua, who worshiped Baal in a wrong fashion and was strong of flesh. I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means, being strong of flesh. You know what I mean? That's interesting. You know what I mean? Let's uh let me show you something real quick. Now let's just get back to this. Let's just get back to this. I want to finish this. Gantua. Who worshiped Baal in a wrong fashion. And it and was strong of flesh, but weak of spirit. Fought ferociously against the circumcised Nephilim. Gantua left their limbs throughout the field of battle as he left them alive but lame for other Raphaim to kill. Gantua, who soon caught by the circumcised Nephilim, and they chained him in the water and gouged out his eyes. Gantua, whose army of 500 were slaughtered while seeing Gantua abused by the Nephilim until he was dead. Dang, they just watched their dog get killed. That's terrible. Saul, remember Saul. Whose madness corrupted the field of battle so that his use of weapons was improper. Saul fought with his own army until he righted himself. His demons had him going crazy. He didn't care who he fighted. Sal, who cut the circumcised Nephilim asunder with great numbers. The circumcised Nephilim recognized Sal as a general and focused all their weapons and arrows upon him. Sal was cut down and drowned by the hands and weapons of the circumcised. Raka, the empty head, whose darkness completely controlled him, also fought in the battle. Raka, whose eyes whitened. Get a little visual behind that. Raka, the empty head, whose dark ones completely controlled him, also fought in the battle. Raka, whose eyes whitened and spoke with the voice of a dark one. Raka, whose dark ones changed his form, so he became a different giant. Raka, who while on the field of battle was perceived as a fellow giant of better the circumcised Nephilim. What? Who had lost his fellow giant years before. Went mad on the field of battle and had to be subdued and eventually killed by his own army. Raka was driven through with a pole and hoisted above the dead in the rain. What? Listen, let's go back and read that again because I think he turned into a whole nother giant on the field that the circumcised Nephilim knew. Raka, who while on the field of battle was perceived as a fellow giant of Bereth, 
the circumcised Nephilim. Bereth, who had lost his fellow giant years before, went mad on the field of battle and had to be subdued. So this is they think they his this guy that they didn't already kill. He coming back to fight him. Wow. Virak, whose visage was beautiful, led his army past the field of battle into Nimrod's kingdom and to Nimrod's castle. Virak and his army then raided Nimrod's stores, eating as much as they could and gathering plunder. Virak, whose flowing hair made him as made him an easy target for the circumcised Nephilim. Virak was struck with many arrows and captured. His army of 500 was slaughtered before him. Virak was cut in half by the circumcised, circumcised Nephilim in the water. As he died, Virak begged Ball of the Sun to cast down boulders onto his enemies and received no answer. Malcolm, the cannibal. Hmm, where have I heard this name, Malcolm? Who was thrown to the wet ground by his dark ones. Malcolm then began to sing to Ball of the Moon in a trance. Malcolm's army of 1,000 giants surrounded him and guarded him in the battle as Malcolm lay in the trance in the water. Malcolm looked to the sky, seeking the full moon of the day to lay his eyes upon through the rain. Malcolm's army was cut down around him, leaving him exposed in the water. Malcolm continued to sing praises to Ball of the Moon in a trance, even until his own death. Now they got a whole song. They got the song he was singing. I ain't gonna get into the song. Cause it's crazy anyway. The song is nuts what he's saying. Ukobak and Sonilan. The circumcised Nephilim then ran Melcom through again and again as he finished his song. He's singing this while they stabbing him. And it's a pretty long little to be getting butchered. And who got him? Ukobak and Sonelin. Dig what I'm talking about. Okay, where, where I'm at. It's a Melcom ran Melcom through again and again as he finished his song. Melcom did not lift an arm from the water to defend itself. It is said that his dark ones prevented him from doing so. Melcom's remaining giants captured and castrated Ukbak and Sonalian and then beheaded them both be before heading back into battle. So the dudes who just killed Melcom, right? The, the rest of his giants that was with Melcom captured and castrated the two dudes who just killed their homeboy, Melcom. You dig what I'm talking about? They just killed Melcom. You dig what I'm talking about? They catch them and castrate them and then behead them. Go back in the battle. These dudes are some gangsters. You dig what I'm talking about? Garyon, the Scarred, whose fourth and final battle was the 100,000 Giant War, also fought. Garyon, the mute drunkard, whose oppression by the Dark Ones favored the circumcised Nephilim on the field of battle. Damn. Garyon, who fought with Driver and Chaser against Shalbiri, 
the circumcised Nephilim, shall Beardy, whose attack Garion did not see, cut his head from his body so that it hung at its side. Garion, alive and oppressed by his dark ones, then swung his driver and chaser as one who has embraced madness, killing many and wounding more. Garion, the broke. Garion then broke Shalbiri's legs so that the uncircumcised Raphaim could kill him, for he could no longer walk. Garion, who with no head, swung the driver and chaser so mightily that in death he killed more than while he was alive. Gyges of curved limbs whose dark ones circled him as a as black flames. Gyges, who had conjured the dark one that drove Mullen, the circumcised Nephilim, to madness. When the circumcised Nephilim saw Gyges and his army of 2,000 on the field of battle, they slaughtered the Raphaim with relish. Gyges was then captured on the field of battle, and the circumcised Nephilim stretched him in the rain and water. Gyges was stretched between two beams, fastening his legs to one and his arms to the other. Gyges was stretched until his veins and sinews burst, and then was beheaded. Uval, this is our dog Uval. Man, man, Uval. <laughs> it's good. Let's go holler at the homie Uval. See what's cracking. Uval the Great, fathers of father of Og's deceased wife Lester. Uval who rode an elephant into battle. Uval who had fallen from the heavens like lightning at the beginning of time. Uval who swore flame because the gods we did not know. Uval's flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to King Og at the entrance of the battlefield. What? Wait a minute. Ain't that a, uh, ain't that the same thing they say about the, the guardian in the Garden of Eden? In the Garden of Eden, don't they say the same thing? Oh, my boy, shout to the God, Malachi Maccabee in the hitty house. You dig what I'm talking about? Sister Tikva in the house. Okay. Create a game. God's in training, man. We just getting a little training in the day, y'all. This ain't nothing. You dig what I'm talking about? Uval's flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to King's Ox at the entrance of the battlefield, just like the angel in Eden. Uval, who spoke curses of pestilence while on the field of battle and saw many circumcised Nephilim fall prey to them. While under the control of his dark ones, Uval fought as a god, killing many, many circumcised Nephilim with flourish as he swung his sword with fervor when uval's dark ones left him upon the field of battle in the mud he woke up surrounded by the armies of nizrog the friend of nimrod nizrog that's a friend of nimrod hmm? okay uval then drove his sword into the belly of nizrog Uval ain't no hoe and cut down and was cut down by Nisrog's generals. Uval ain't no hoe. The sky darkened more upon the death of Uval. Uval is the giant whose heart broke the most when the moon child was lost. Uval's army of 5,000 giants became exceedingly violent and bloodthirsty, choosing to kill the circumcised in any such way as to defile them in life and death. The circumcised Nephilim body parts were piled high above the waters in the field of battle. 
when Og saw that Uval had been killed, he raised his arms over the battlefield. So it came about that. Listen, listen to this, man. So it came about when King Og held his hands up that the uncircumcised Raphael prevailed. And when he let his hand down, the circumcised Nephilim prevailed. Ain't this the same thing? Um, Remember them? Um, The same thing that happened to Moses, right? Moses, they keep his hands up. His life's fighting. They win it. You dig what I'm talking about? They fight and they win it. You feel you feel me? And um when Moses let his arms down, what is that? What verse is that? Where is that in the Bible? You know what I mean? Anybody know where that is in the Bible? Post that in the chat for me, your boy. You dig what I'm talking about? Because uh, I think it's in, it's got to be in Exodus, right? You dig what I'm talking about? Got to be in Exodus somewhere. Something like that. All right. Okay. Let's read it one more time, man. Because remember, this is one of the most evilest person in the world doing exactly what they saying your prophet did. Listen, before your prophet was ever even thought about a born, before Abram was born, you dig what I'm talking about? Only the biblical stories say that Nimrod and all them talk. But we're going to go with that. But this is before Moses. To, at least, if if Nimrod spoke to Moses and Nimrod was at least 500 years older than Moses, right? That places him smack dab in the middle of uh, uh, right where we say he is roughly 4,400 BC. But if he talked to uh, uh, Abram, let's just say 3953 BC, he talked to him. That's still 2,400 years before the time of Moses. But look what they're saying. Let's get to it. God's in training, yo. So it came about when King Og held his hands up that the uncircumcised Raphael prevailed. And when he let his hand down, the circumcised Nephilim prevailed. But King Og's large arms and hands were heavy. So they took a temple pillar and placed it under him. And he sat on it. And Ogius and Ornius supported his hands. One on one side and one on the other with Anak, the keeper of the bodies before Baal, supporting them both. And thus King Og's hands were steady in the rain until the dark sun set. Wow. Wow. The rain continued to fall upon the world for the windows of heaven were completely open. King Og saw that the water and the thunders increased and that the water was now up to his warriors midsection or higher. King Og asked that his arms be lowered and saw that the uncircumcised Rephaim still prevailed in battle. The war continued and the losses were many. The bodies of the dead floated and drifted within the waters. At dusk, King Og entered the hundred thousand giant wall, connected to his floating beast, the Tantiqua. Huh? Same, is this the same Gantiqua of Hindu fame? Because they say it's kind of like a weapon. The Gantiqua. But it's like a, a okay. King Og connected to his beast became as a wolf. King Og ran through the water and ran in front of the battle lines. King Og, who was trained in the priesthood of Ball of the Moon, King Og 
the leader of the uncircumcised Raphaim to rid the earth of the circumcised and the killers of the moon child. And then King Og released all his rage upon the circumcised Nephilim while connected to the Gantiqua. The Gantiqua fought with the uncircumcised Nephilim and slew them in a great slaughter. And they fled from him. King Og killed 500 circumcised Nephilim that day as he made his way towards Nimrod. The uncircumcised Raphaim pushed Nimrod and his circumcised Nephilim back into the kingdom with their warfare. The rain continued to fall and the water on the field of battle had turned as red as blood and the hands of Mot were engaged with the dead. In that day of war, 144,000 foot circumcised Nephilim warriors died at the hands of King Og and his army. Here go your 144,000 too. Uh-oh. It's crazy. Their bones and flesh were all lost to the water. Then Anna the keeper of the bodies before Baal found Nimrod in the distance in the wet darkness. Anak stood and held ground for King Og, and Nimrod swung his sword, striking Anak down. Anak thought it was tough. He ran up against that guy. They say he a hunter before the Lord. Huh? Who is the Lord? Baal. So the first question, who the Lord of the Bible? Striking Anak down, Anak fought with the heart of one who oppresses a stranger, wounding Nimrod's genitals. But Anak was no match for Nimrod's strength, and Nimrod broke Anak's legs and pierced his side with a spear, and immediately his dark ones exited him. Dang, they left him stinking. And when Anak cried out with a loud voice, he said, Ball, into your arms I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last as Nimrod pierced him again. Anak then died face down in the rising waters. The uncircumcised Raphaim continued to overwhelm the circumcised Nephilim in battle and all of Nimrod's smaller cells with the edge of the sword. The slaughter was complete and the waters were thick with the blood of the circumcised. Then Baal of the earth seized King Og in his mind, saying, recite these words to Anzal, the slayer of smaller cells, before Baal, that I will utterly blot the memory of the circumcised Nephilim from under the heaven. The great waters continued to swell and cover the earth as one covers a candlestick of light with tongs and, and snuff dishes and all of the oil vessels vessels thereof king og then stepped forward and he and his and he and nimrod wrestled in the heavy waters of the night rain with no weapons and when king og saw that he prevailed not against nimrod he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of nimrod's thigh was out of joint wait a minute what wait a minute what is um, is this the story of Jacob fighting an angel and he, he gets overwhelmed and he, he touches thigh and break his thigh? What's what is going on? Remember, this is for Christ, this is before Christian, this is before. Uh, uh, Israelitism as a whole. This was before Abram. Right? This is 22.553 BC. Know where we at right now. 22.553 BC. Hit like, subscribe, uh, uh, share the channel, man. You did what I'm talking about. Don't be greedy. Share with the needy.
you dig what i'm talking about you never know who will like it man you know come with it let's go let's get let's get right back to it right and when king og saw that he prevailed not against against nimrod nimrod is <laughs> young strong <laughs> come here putting them hands on them boys they rocking out he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of nimrod's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him then nimrod reached into the water and found a tent spike that he desired to drive it through king og's head right somebody else did that in the bible was about to put a uh what's the sister name um was it yael Hurricane, Hurricane in the house. What's up, Detroit up in this thing? You dig what I'm talking about? What up, dog? Crack a lack, huh? Hurricane in the house. Thank you for stopping through, family man. We breaking down this Nimrod part four, boy. We going crazy on it, man. We did. listen. There's so much shit out here, bro. It's so much stuff out here, bro. Listen, oh, I speak just open you up. It just give you what's truth and how to prove it. You dig what I'm talking about? But then you start to look. First of all, all the stuff you already know. But then you start to look at stuff you don't know. And then, boom, you just, you just blow your mind. You dig what I'm talking about? It's all type of stuff going on. You see that? The Jacob story is rooted in Nimrod. You see that, C-Lop? Yeah, bro. Yeah. And look, but hold on. Also, the story is, 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 is the sister, Yael. Remember, she was supposed to, she drove a tent spike through somebody's head. I forget it. Was, was it never was it Nebuchadnezzar? I think it was... Uh, Sister Yael in the Bible, and but and look, but the Nimrod right here. The Nimrod reached into the water and found the tent spike, and he desired to drive it through King Og's head. Another king about to take a tent spike to the head, huh? How often that happened? King Og then pulled Nimrod's loincloth, exposing his severely wounded member. King Og was dumbfounded by Nimrod's carved loins and stopped fighting. <laughs> he said, what? Listen to what Nimrod said. <laughs> Nimrod said, what would cause a male to circumcise his member? He demanded, the circumcision is the truth that I am the father of all. Let all males who circumcise their members be the descendants of Nimrod what and ever since that day in the rain all males who cut their for who cut the foreskin or who have it cut have all glory and have have give all glory to honor and nimrod disgusted ball of the moon strengthening Og, saying i am ball of the moon whom you honor it goes well for you to kick against the pricks wow this is crazy and king og overpowered nimrod and with a belt gave him 40 stripes damn looking like his daddy king og beat him about his wounded member because nimrod was vile then nimrod stabbed king og suddenly and proceeded to stab king og in the back with a knife many times nimrod then stood above king og taunting and gesturing to his land and his army in the rain just like a bad guy would yeah nigga, you instead of just killing him, you you shouldn't have came around here you tell the whole story you did what i'm talking about but him but why he talking instead of just finishing the job watch what happened all this i will give you if you will allow me to kneel before you be forgiven for the murder of your daughter, the moon child, I would rather be a servant at the footstool in your kingdom than to have 
what is left of my kingdom at war with you. Huh? That sounds familiar too. And the rain fell so strongly that Og and Nimrod tried, tired of combat. And the battle between Og and Nimrod, he stabbed him a bunch of times. They still fighting. They got a, 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 regenerative, a regenerative healing factor that must be off the charts. You dig what I'm talking about? <laughs> he say, And the rain fell so strongly that Og and Nimrod tired of the combat. And the battle between Og and Nimrod ended for that time because the world was covered in water. And wounded Nimrod, wounded King Og, Anzal, and Ogis, and the remaining giants began the arduous climb into the mountains to escape the waters. Are the tales of the further battles of giants not told in the scrolls of the wars of giants in the mountains? The final battle with Nimrod, chapter 5. All known copies of the lost book of King Og have a break in text at this point. The speculation is that because it is the first chapter directly after the flood that somehow record keeping was lax in some way interesting things happen at this point of the text in a sense the struggle between the two transcribers of this tome ends anak who was the original transcriber has his death marked in chapter four from this point on in the book the tone changes and this is because of the new transcriber anzal though anzal must have transcribed most of it, not all of the 100,000 giant war, which, which introduces the idea that perhaps there was yet a third transcriber of King Og's words. Most of the ch chapter five is missing. Unfortunately, King Og's final physical battle with Nimrod has been recorded, as you will see. To this end, we apologize for the heavy break in both continuity and translation. Outside of the death of Nimrod, the key factor of this chapter is that both King Og and his son Ogius participating in the killing of Nimrod. This leaves both chapter 6 and 7 with the question of which Og is the story now following? Remember, I told you many of the deeds of Ogius are really, or told about Og are really the uh, the actual deeds of Ogius, right? This almost answers the question of King Og's ridiculous longevity because the timeline could very well be split between King Og and his warrior son. This is Father Martin and Father Demon. You dig what I'm talking about? The final battle between King Og and Nimrod. Blind with rage to attack Nimrod, hip and thigh with great power. And King Og grabbed for Nimrod by his twice ruined genitals and the fruit from the vine <laughs> in his balls. Blood spits from Nimrod became slick and all, unable to hold. Blood, the blood pits Nimrod became slick and unable to hold. And Nimrod reached forward and blinded Og, pulling the jelly from the socket. Og, wounded, retreated. Nimrod, still above King Og, taunting and singing, saying the following. You need knowledge, King Og, and here it is, to know evil and an instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of evil, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young giant, knowledge, and weaponry, 
a wise giant will hear and increase learning and a giant of understanding will attain wicked counsel. What? To understand an incantation and an enigma, the world of the wise and their riddles. The fear of circumcision is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise evil and instruction. My giant hear the instruction of circumcision and do not forsake the law of your member for they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. My giant talking to King Og, if the uncircumcised entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait to shed circumcised blood. Let us lurk secretly for the circumcised without cause. Let us swallow them alive like mops and, and whole like those who go down to dwell with him. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast your lot among the uncircumcised. Let us all have one purse. My giant, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from the uncircumcised path. Wow, this sounds so familiar. For their feet run to bad ideas, and they make haste to keep the skins on their own members. Surely in vain the net is spread, but they lay in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly in their own lives. So are the ways of the uncircumcised who are greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Upon hearing this, old cried out the ball of the moon, saying, Nimrod is smitten me, and my race is so low, so low. He has taken your gift, the moon child, and he has defied you ever since with false prophecies and lies upon lies, and now he has taken my eye. If the moon child was as sacred to you as she was to me, please give me my sight back. Listen, and at that moment, a beam from the moon shone into the hollowness of King Og's empty eye socket, and it filled with the moon's glow. From then on, Og's eye was refilled, and then Og attacked and subdued Nimrod. Og stood above Nimrod and screamed, Og, yes, I require that you partake in the end of the circumcision. Then Ogius entered the blood pit of ball of the earth, and Ogius stepped first, fo stepped forward, and pulled at the head and skull of Nimrod, as King Og pulled at the ankles, and Nimrod's neck gave first, as Ogius wrenched it free. Dang, they pulled him apart with his hands. Oh, and as Nimrod's flesh tore, he gave up the ghost and was eaten with worms and Ogius and King Og in celebration, the great dragon of old, the pit in the fire, dot, 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 in preparation. Now, we could end it right there. But there's another part um, told about Og in Bashan, right? Let's let's hold on. Let me see. Let's go right here. Let's see if we can tap this in real quick. Wow, they got a new one. King Og of Bashan. I just want to get this in real quick. And we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show y'all something about 
the timeline. I'm going to show you um, that many of these biblical characters, right, are not necessarily men. Or they can be a man, but more like a group of men. But for sure what most of them are, especially many of the forefathers, the, 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 the elder gods and, and men and, uh, you know, in time, uh, they are in fact times like Noah, right? Think about this. If Noah is a time, right? What's Noah daddy? What is Lama? If Noah is a time, hold on. Let's get to it real quick. Let me show them. If Noah is a time, right? What is uh what is Lama? Lama is a time too. Well then what is Methuselah? It's a time. Then what is Enoch? Enoch is a time. Enoch is special because it's a 365 year uh, 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 time span where a group of men, 11 seers called Enoch's or the priest of Melchizedek. You dig what I'm talking about? The Metatron, you dig what I'm talking about is uh, ran by the angels of the Melchizedek. You dig what I'm talking about? These are seers. These are the men who gave the prophecies to the giants before the flood. The Enoch's. Remember, we just learned Ohio, my way. They from different areas. So how could Enoch be in all these areas? At the end of the world in all the areas. Because it's 11 different men over a 365 year span of time. What, how many years is 11 generations? Huh? 363 years. How long did Enoch last? Anybody? How long did Enoch live, should I say? Since we know your time, how long did the time of Enoch last? Okay, I'm gonna show y'all something in a second, but let's get to this. Chapter six was told by Anzal the Slayer, the smaller cells before Ball of the Moon. It came to pass that the kingdom and army of O fasted before their march to Bashan. On the fifth day of fasting, the whole of O's encampment was covered in smoke and fire and it was covered in smoke and fire came down. The fire struck the sacrifices in the high places because ball of the sun and ball of the earth were there. The ground of the temple and the paths leading to it became charged on the fifth day with the presence of ball of the earth and ball of the sun. Many Raphaim attempted to climb the hill at the time of Og's prophecy and were struck dead with fire when they touched the charged ground. On that day, in the temple of Baal of the earth, Og received the prophecy. On that day, Og's eyes whitened and he fell into a solemn forecaster trance. Hmm. King Og of the temple became ball of the earth's medium. On that day, Og's voice, Og's voice became as that of iron, so that all that were near were struck by it. O, king of the Raphaim, survivor of the great waters, killer of Nimrod, and born of the priesthood of Baal of the moon, spoke the words of Baal. Og spoke the prophecy before the march to Bashan. 
This is before he even took control of Bashan. The prophecy of the rules and wrath of Baal and the curses upon the barriers of Bashan. Do they not also follow as spoken by old and transcribed by Anzal, the slayer of the smaller cells? Baal of the earth agrees with his vessel, King Og, proceeding, honor in high places that worship Baal of the earth. Only the priests will be admitted to the high places. Anyone that has touched the mount or its border, whosoever touches it as he lives, will surely be sacrificed to Baal of the earth. Before he is burned, he will be stoned and run through with a spear. The testimony of such deaths will be kept in the high places of worship. The high places of worship will be covered with gold inside and out with a gold crown and a rim or border, a border or a border around the top. Rings will be attached to the outer walls for worship. Chains and bracelets will stay and staves will be put into the rings for the Raphaim to carry the high place to its next resting place in Bashan. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Never forget the unspoken mistake. I am ball of the earth who brought you victory in the hundred thousand giant war, who brought you out of the waters of death and bondage and the slavery of the older world. They saying they survived the flood. They saying this is after the flood. Behold. Any Raphaim that sacrifices to any of the gods, save ball of the earth, ball of the moon, ball of the sun, or ball of the stars and celestial bodies, or Mot is cursed. If a Raphaim worships Mot, let it be a dishonor to him and a pathway to the worship of ball of the earth. Any Raphaim that sacrifices to another insect-sized god will be utterly destroyed with the wrath that waxes hot. Any Raphaim that brings other gods before me huh, will spill his fecal entrails out on the on the path. Any of you Raphaim who worships another will be cut down with the sword and sacrificed with flames. And your sacrifice shall be eaten by your fellow giants. Wow. Behold, you uncircumcised Raphaim. Do not cut your members with circumcision as those who worship insect-sized gods do. If a giant breaks covenant with his loins by cutting them, Baal will break my covenant with him. It is an abomination to have a mangled member. Any Raphaim who cuts his own member with circumcision shall also forever be cut off from Baal of the earth. Will his torn flesh ever grow back and cover? Nor will Baal welcome that giant back or cover him with protection. It's nasty. He ain't no he just thing. He ain't gonna get no circumcision. That's, that's terrible. That from under cheese up under that mud that I mean, it's dick stank. Excuse my friend, excuse me. Sorry. Ugh. It is an abomination to have a mangled member. Any Raphaim who cuts his own member with circumcision shall forever be cut off from Baal of the earth. Will his torn flesh ever grow back in cover? Nor will Baal come welcome that giant back or cover him in the protection. Baal of the earth will deal treacherously with him. Wrathful hostility will be his existence. Baal of the sun will turn away from him and burn him as a farmer turns from a degenerate crop and in emulates the field i will appoint all i will appoint over all carved loin raphaim a sudden terror consumption and fever that will waste the eyes and cause the soul to pine away whatever profit a circumcised raphaim seeks to secure his enemies will eat away. 
all this and more will be visited upon the giants who stubbornly choose to mar their loins for the wages for circumcision are death well for the wages of sin are death for the wages of circumcision are death what but the gift of intact loins is life circumcision for any purpose is an abomination for there is no purpose the carving of the loins is a visible curse upon any Raphaim who chooses it. But why would Ball say that? Huh? Why would Ball say that? Because creators say he gave a sign to women to who you can breed to. And that sign is circumcision. So the people, even though they was Ahuin, even though they may have been bad people, they passed on their genetic stock because it was prophesied and covenanted with the creator that these people would be uh, able to pass their genetic lines on down. So, Okay. All this and more will be visited upon those giants who stubbornly choose to mar their loins. All right. The carving of loins is a visible curse upon any Raphaim who chooses it. A useless, shortened vessel is an abomination to the giant who owns it. When the circumcised giants sprouted throughout the lands like grass and all who religiously cut their members flourished listen it was so that ball could destroy them forever now these people flourishing the giant is dying off did you, you see it did you see it even though they back talking you dig what i'm talking about they gum bumping right Ball of the earth will bring back their, their curse of circumcision upon them and utterly destroy them and their corrupted members. Is that so? Ball of the earth will visit destruction upon them and ball of the sun will consume their corrupted members and force ends. Ball of the sun is revealed from beyond against the unrighteousness circumcised giants the unrighteous circumcised giants that stand before Og and are a barrier before Bashan. Never forget the unspoken mistake. Make idols of Baal. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me see. Let me um let me see if I can uh get this up here real quick. Let me see if I can get a uh a picture of ball up here. Let me see if I can get a picture of ball up here. Look. Look at ball. Ha! <laughs> Look at ball. Didn't I also tell you he was, he was Shamash and Molek? You pull up ball, this is what it show. Look at Ashtaroth. Huh? all signs of ball in different religions and different places over the over the world didn't i tell you he was zeus marduk asher yeah well let's get a, let's get a picture of him real quick look at look at my look at look at him Baal. he was a bad boy he was a bad man, dumb. True gun man, dumb. You dig what I'm talking about? He was a bad boy. He wasn't no, he wasn't no joke. 
he ruled for over four thousand years man he was a, a g he was a g make idols of ball make them of silver and gold look what we see here make graven images to ball at the base of the high places ain't that what israel was doing make graven images of ball that are of heaven above or that is in the water or that is beneath the earth or of the earth itself inscribe upon them the outer walls of the temple and upon the sacred swords and rooms of ball who else got room odin make the altar in the high place to sacrifice only the smaller cell children who else was sacrificing children this guy this guy here yeah look what he's doing their sons and their daughters they sacrifice to the to the idols to the gods of canaan look at this look at this you dig what i'm saying they get deep And Israel was was worshiping them in the high places of Baal. Guess who? And guess who was right there in the high place next in the in the high places? The Asherahs of Ashtaroth. Then I tell you, Ashtaroth was Yahweh. Did not Yahweh send the Israelites to the four corners of the world? So did Ashtaroth. Remember, you got to look at what a thing is. Show what it produces. You dig what I'm talking about? It say make an altar in the high places to sacrifice only the smaller self children. Look what he's doing. Build an altar of hewn stone. Lift the stones with fist or rock. Sacrifice only the lives of the children of the smaller cells on the altar. Eat the burned morsels and no pollution shall come of it if you fear ball of the earth. If you own a smaller self male and do not eat him for six years, then on the seventh, he can take a smaller self priestess as a wife. If the smaller self wife bears a male child by him, the male infant is to be sacrificed with fire. If the smaller self wife bears a female child, the female child will be spared to become a sorceress in the high places. Huh? If Ball is to be known, he must first know you. If Ball is to be approached, bring a sacrifice of life worthy of him. If you are to be heard by Ball, you must open your throat and grovel. Damn, this shit get deep, man. Worship Ball with debauchery, lust, drunkenness. This is just the opposite of anything creators tell you. Listen. This is how evil these people was. Worship ball with debauchery, lust, drunkenness, carousing, and proper idolatry. Listen intently to ball's movings, large voice. Creator speak with their small voice. Bring wine and not water to protect your stomach from the illness of polluted sacrificial meat. Eat sacrificial meat with fervor and drink wine lustily. It is for the followers of Baal of the earth to drink wine and to crave strong drink and beer. Drink and forget what the other gods have decreed. Despise the followers of false gods and their rights. Hmm? Who are you talking about? You talking about you, faithers. For Baal of the earth has approved what you do just like christ 
approved uh dumb guy versus and a papal bull that god said it was all right to be idolatrous and debaucherous and lust and drunkenness as long as you believed in him and then you asked for forgiveness huh because why for ball of the earth has approved what you do be wise wine is your mocker and beer is your brawler pound the drums at the bottom of the hill be led by them in worship of ball of the earth be drunk and immoral as ball requests be so drunk as to not tell between pure and impurity hey be drunken and stubborn for ball drink intoxicating drink fermented in the wilderness you will control the poison of serpents and, and the cruel venom of asp in your stupor. Ball of the earth has seen to it. Your drunkenness in the name of ball of the earth will cover you and you will do no wrong before him. Gaze into the wine when it is red and when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. Blessings be to you who get up early to drink and stay up at night and get drunk before ball of the earth linger long at the wine go in search of mixed wine your eyes will see and y'all know what y'all do when you when you mix drinks you get toe up your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things let us behave indecently in the time before ball of the earth carousing in our drunkenness in debauchery and in dissension and jealousy for ball of the earth yes you will be like the ones that lie down in the midst of the sea celebrate as only the uncircumcised the ball do drink the wine feast upon the sacrificial meat and be filled with the spirit of ball of the earth the devil dang this nigga the devil man Ball was a terrible dude. Gangster dog. Came front. Take the name of Ball of the Earth in vain. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Ball of the Earth who brings fertility and makes the grass grow for the beast of old and plants for the Raphaim to cultivate and bring forth food from the land. Ball who brings large grapevines that gladden Raphaim hearts with wine. Remember they, uh, what's McCullough went into the land and said they had the big old grapes in there? Ball who brings, uh, was that Joshua in there? Ball who brings, or Caleb? Ball who brings oil to make Raphaim faces shine and for the head that sustains the bellies. Ball of the earth has sworn by his right burning hand never again will i give your grain as food give will i give your grain as food for your enemies the rebellious circumcised raphaim barriers before bashan will never again drink the new wine which comes as by as my blessing upon the land take the time Take the name of ball of the earth in vain at regular intervals. It is to be both used as a commandment and a curse for your enemy. Dang. Ball of the earth understands the need. Keep your days in remembrance of ball of the earth. Do your work on all days and rest when the job is finished as the bright ones did not stop work until it was complete. Mm. kill and kill again when necessary damn this is why i wanted to read this man this shit get dark you dig what i'm talking about this shit get dark you dig what i'm saying but listen it's totally antithetical to or the antithesis of what the Ten Commandments is, is what he's saying. Ball was a crude dude, man. And he kept you in a state of utter just 
debauch, like you said, debauchery. That was the perfect word. He said, take the name of Baal in vain regularly. <laughs> Damn. Listen what he say, man. He said, kill and kill again when necessary. Life is properly sacrificed when dispatched by a servant of Baal of the earth. This is, uh, could this be the, the beginning of uh, uh, religious killings? In the name of a deity like Jesus, like Buddha, like Brahma, like Christ, like Allah. Wow. Listen to what he said. Always avenge yourself. Always avenge yourself. That which you cannot leave to ball for the avenging ends with him. Take anything when needed. Bear false witness to secure safety. Covet your neighbor's house. Covet your neighbor's smaller cells. His ox and all that is his if it benefits ball of the earth. He that steals smaller cells from his neighbor shall only sacrifice the stolen lives to ball with fire, a fire that leaves only ash. This stolen meat cannot be consumed. If a Raphaim comes presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him in the name of ball of the earth, ball of the earth cleanses the giant killer and he becomes a warrior and a champion. Ball, man, you a foul dude, bro. You did what I'm talking about? You foul, cuz. He that smites the giant with his bare hand so that he dies shall surely be called a warrior and a champion, David. Beloved. Dawu. Head for head. Eye for eye. Hair for hair, limb for limb, burning for burning, strike for strike. The Raphaim will meet out their own ways of justice before ball of the earth. Man, this was a lawless, terrible time. Never forget the unspoken mistake. Embrace the fear that ball of the earth is come to prove you. That his fear may be in you. Ain't that what your God tell you to do? He keep you in a state of fear so you ain't thinking. It's just better to go along with it. You don't never question nothing. You don't never test the spirit. Since we have been cleansed in sacrificial flame, we will serve wrath with ball of the earth and ball of the sun to the barrier at Bashan. It is a fearful thing to fall into the burning sacrifice of the living ball of the earth. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of ball. Fear ball of the earth and Mot, who will destroy both body and soul in the afterlife. Embrace the fear of ball. Behold the storm of ball of the earth. Wrath has gone forth. A whirling tempest, a wrath that guides Og. It will burst open the heads of those that stand as a barrier before the gates of Bashan. Behold, from Baal's mouth comes the smoldering driver and chaser, which strike down the army and will rule them with a flaming yoke of iron. Ball of the earth will tread the wine press of his own fury, and his enemies will drink deep unto death. Ball of the earth's wrath will be mixed as sour wine, poured out and drunk by those who stand as barriers before Bashan. 
The wine of balls, violence will mock and rage. The drunkenness will cause poverty, woe, sorrow, fighting, and the peeling of skin. Lesions without cause and red eyes. The sour wine of ball will sting like an adder. Those barriers of Bashan will be drunken and insensitive to pain, and they will drink more of the mixed sour wine, which is ball's corruption unto them. Their good judgment will be perverted. They will drink more because they will perish from legions, lesions and have no anesthetics. Strong mixed drink will not satisfy. The land will not be blessed. So you ain't going to be just drinking. You're going to be smoking something too. Crackhead. Meth head. Heron. Fetty. The sour mixed wine will be balls of the earth wrath upon them. In their folly, they will champion drinkers. Listen, he, he, he making fun of these niggas now. He just told them, commanded them to drink. Now look what he's saying. In their folly, following him, they will become they will champion drinkers and they will become experts at mixing my poison. They will stagger and vomit. Their future tomorrows will be hopeless before them. They cannot escape the consequences when Ball of the Earth judges them. Since they have not listened, Ball of the Earth is committed to driving them mad. This is what your God do for them. The sights they will see will affect their intelligence. Ball of the Earth will, affect, will afflict their needs and legs with painful weeping sores that cannot be cursed. Wait a minute. That's in a, that's in a wasp. Spreading from the soles of their feet where they tread upon the earth of ball to the top of their head. Lesions will cover them and cannot be soothed. Itch will fray the edges of their skin. The discomfort that makes their minds detach wow in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in dire poverty and madness and in the darkness they will finally serve ball while covered with the lesions bringing forth rot and discomfort this is exactly what was going on before the flood While in their clouded minds, King Og will put an iron yoke upon their neck until they are destroyed. In their destruction, they will desire to eat the flesh of their loved ones. The hunger that King Og will destroy them with as he eats their crops and livestock and loved ones will push them to complete madness. Unable to understand that which happens to them, the land of Bashan becomes a dark question to them. They will desire to eat their own yellowing entrails to know to end it all. This will be their perfect madness. Step aside, barrier, make way for King Og. So he going to a place where uh, Baal has set it up for him to rule. You dig what I'm talking about? He didn't set it up. The ball to rule. And the, and the walls are already up. You dig what I'm talking about? Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, Give a uh, let me see, this one might work. Okay. Okay. 
All right, this is Bashan. This is where they say Bashan is. You get what I'm talking about? Over in the, uh, northeastern Africa, what they call uh, the Middle East. They say part of the tribe of Dan was unable to secure its inheritance, migrated north and captured Laish, renaming it Dan. Right here. Outside at the edge of Bashan. Next to Geshur. You dig what I'm talking about? Which later, I guess, becomes the land of Manasseh. But look at Asher. Asher is Baal. Well, Asher of the Syrians is Baal. Let's, let's get that understood. But he is El Adonai. You did what I'm talking about also. So don't get it twisted. And the inspiring these guys right here in Manasseh. Or ancient Bashan right uh if these circumcised giants do not yield before King Og and his army and accept his terms ball of the earth will release his plagues upon them harsh and prolonged disasters and lingering itching illnesses their loins will weep and become leprous going on a journey will be painful those itchy loin, the circumcised transgressors against King Og will be altogether destroyed. Their prosperity, their posterity, excuse me, will be cut off. Ball of the earth's wrath is just. Keep your heart impertinent and hard, O oh, you worshipers of ball of the earth. Store up wrath that ball will release through you. Be prepared to release a rage. It says, hold on, a rage that is capricious, self-indulgent, and irritable with the understanding that ball of the earth means itself. All who stand, barriers and oaks path, these curses and more will, be, will come upon them. For Og will be known as King Og of Bashan forever. Dang. These curses will pursue you and overtake them until they are destroyed wait a minute because they did not obey ball of the earth they stood as a barrier in the path of my chosen servant oak ball of the earth will destroy their wicked house and kingdom mm. okay boy this is this is nuts you do what I'm talking about. Um, do y'all still want me to keep going? You did what I'm talking about, cause it's more. You did what I'm talking about. I just want to read this part right here, right? This is chapter. Uh, 26 right dig this right and i went from thence to the middle of the earth and i saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming of a dismembered tree and there i saw a holy mountain and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream and it flowed towards the south. Wait a minute, what? And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this. And between them, a deep and narrow ravine. And it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. And to the west thereof, there was another mount lower than the former 
in a small elevation and a ravine deep and dry between them and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains and all the ravines were deep and narrow being formed of hard rock and trees were not planted upon them and i marveled at the rocks and i marveled at the ravine yea i marveled very much then i said for what object is this blessed land which is entirely filled with trees and is a, and is a, and this accursed valley between then uriel hold on one of the holy angels who was with me answered and said this a cursed a cursed valley is for those who are accursed forever here are the accursed be here all accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the lord unseemly words of the holy of his holy speak speak hard things and this is so crazy this is so crazy oh uh oh this is um actually i, I went into the book of enoch of the giants you did what i'm talking about but bro this one is heavy man heavy man we got misha in the house hurricane yadre yeah yadre hey give it a little knock on that thing just a little bit turn it up you know what i mean we can vibe a little bit this is what come up cosmo hey you did what i'm saying Got Stephanie Random, Pick with Sela. She brewing this thing. What's going on? Honor and humility. I gotta get something together for my brother Malachi, man. Something heavy. You dig what I'm talking about? Right up his alley. You dig what I'm saying? It's a nice track. Remember me some. Remind me, reminds him some of that boot camp click, yeah. You know what I mean? Some of that, uh, like that Pete Rock. You dig what I'm talking about? No, or like really like some, uh, uh, what's my man name, man? They about to be, they about to be on my head if I don't get this name right. Dilla, almost like some Dilla. You dig what I'm talking about? Create a gang in the place to be, yes, sir. Say chew the meat, spit out the bones. Huh? How about you just eat all the veggies? <laughs> chew the fruit, spit out the seed, correct. Yeah, the gang, 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 gang. Press that like, subscribe, share the channel. Let's get it out there, man. Good looking hurricane. Hurricane said, I share it, bro. Yeah. Take a story rooted in Nimrod now, huh? Crazy, Sila. Yeah, it was all bad in them times, man. You did what I'm talking about. Oh, hey, this is Misha in the house. Get it, gang, gang. Get it, gang. Hey. That thing is another false god, which is trying to relive what Paul did. Cycle don't stop exactly. You did what I'm talking about. He said, it seems they're trying to call back Paul to this time. What you concern is, I just told you, certain this is Paul, and they, they and listen, in the opening ceremony for CERN was to Paul. Why do you think they have an arch of ball and of Shiva dancing in front? Because Ball took the name Shiva. 
Yeah. Identify the actions, right? And what you see and also what you don't see, right? Facts. You did what I'm talking about. She grew. This or what is mean child? That's okay. Uh, Stephanie Randall, the moon child of uh, the giant Raphael dying off. Uh, their God said he was gonna bless them after they made a, a mistake. You know, what I mean, they start uh, doing homosexuality and they um uh, got into like these birth control tactics. You did what I'm talking about. So, you know, they were into uh, all type of stuff that was just knocking the, uh, the race down. You did what I'm talking about to where there was only one female left. And she gave birth to this girl child who was supposed to go on to replenish the race. You did what I'm talking about. Nimrod uh, came into the kingdom. He got inspired by a... Uh, 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 one of the false deities of oh, one of Ball's home, home, his home girl. They say not to keep my sheep. You did what I'm saying? And so, uh, the child that last female that was birthed by the rock beam got killed in a melee. You did what I'm talking about? So, um, that was it for them. The P. Basically, these niggas is re rocking pump fake with each arc cycle. Exactly. Exactly, Dub P. Four gods raise their heads up every arc cycle, B cycle. Right now, that, that beast, that beast is called religion. It is called Christianity. It's called Islam. It's called Buddhism. It's called Brahmanism. And let me get this understood to y'all. You call yourself a Jew, or you practice the uh, 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 Hebrew religion. You dig what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about the Essenes and the Nazarene. I'm talking about the people who call this the Hebrew Jew, who live by the tenets uh, of the biblical uh, uh, God. Did what I'm talking about. Y'all part of the Christian church too. Stop it. You did what I'm talking about. So stop cracking on on um on on Christians like y'all not using the same book. Y'all the Leviticus. Real Israelites didn't need no book. Never had a book. Only the niggas who was trying to learn how to be Israelites needed a book and would ever need a book. Dig what I'm talking about? Got that knock on that thing. That's that. That's my boy, Kevin Sears. He make beats his baby brother Bugsy on the beats. You dig what I'm talking about? Y'all hit my boy Bugs up on the beats, man. You dig what I'm talking about? Let's see if I can. Uh, I got some. I got some. I got some rock in here. You dig what I'm talking about? I got some that. Uh, I got some knock in this thing, boy. Cosmonian Bugsy Beats, boy. You dig what I'm talking about? Keep this thing rocking. You dig what I'm talking about? Like my boy say, it's a vibe. <laughs> hey, come on, let's turn it up. Rock. Got us a 
good lesson in today. Nimrod. Oh, oh. Hollering at the brother of Zadok and, and Don Yehuda and Young Hill Topper. You dig what I'm talking about? Not the Peel Popper, but the Hill Topper. You dig what I'm talking about? At the uh, Scorn Black Man podcast, they had an interesting show today. It was interesting. So, you know, Cosmonian, you know, Cosmon himself. You dig what I'm talking about? Drop through, man, and man, I you know sometimes I be when I'm reading this a waspy right, I ain't even gonna lie. I done read this mug a, a bunch of times, right? But you, it's like every every time you pick it up, you know you read this, but it reveals something new to you every single time. Every time you did what I'm talking about, it's never see in and in, in like I've I've seen things you did what I'm talking about and I've read them and I know I read them, but when you go back and you look at it again, you'd be like, How didn't I notice this? You know what I mean? You get you get a like a, a deeper understanding of what's going on with the goings on, man, and you get a whole different view. But what's popping? You dig what I'm talking about? Um, we was uh, 
I think we was in the book of Apollo and we was reading about uh Simia. Watch it. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, hold on. Trying to get to this a waspy real quick. Did what I'm saying. Um, bring this up. Okay. So we was talking about um you know the the well the topic of the show was pimps hoes and ufos somehow don't ask me how the shit actually made sense how <laughs> he made that work pimps hoes and ufos how he made that work you did what i'm talking about but he did it great show to the brother Hilltop man bringing that out right there brothers Don Yehuda and Zadok um we were in the book of Apollo right and we were talking about spaceships you did what I'm talking about we were talking about spaceships and it came up um to the part of uh where Simeon actually comes to the planet and picks up uh, a couple mil, a couple billion people in a in a spaceship called an Atavasi. You dig what I'm talking about? I'm trying to find this. Um, I just can't remember what verse it is, but I know it's in Apollo. Oh, here it go. Here it go. It's Apollo 10. Hold on. Somebody, I think y'all probably letting me know that I, that's what I'm doing. I can't, I'm looking at this other screen right this second. You dig what I'm talking about? Let me, let me share some of this O with you so I can show you what I'm seeing and share this O with you. You get what I'm talking about? Let me blow it up a little bit more. Let me blow it up just a little bit more for you. I know everybody like to read. Okay. And we was reading about the Atavasi, right? It's it said it came down that mug was was, was bigger than a moon. Let's just start at, let's start at number four. In the evening of the 29th day, a light was seen high up in the firmament to the Northwest, brilliant like a star, the first magnitude, right? This is Apollo 10 and four, right? Presently, it grew larger and brighter 
and shot across the toward the southwest firmament and then began to descend toward the earth growing larger and brighter as it came. The people of the lower heaven knew it was an adivasi of the third resurrection and they rejoiced before Jehovah singing and praying. Now the marshals and proper persons for the purpose commence bringing into form the brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah. Now look. At midnight, the sea of fire, the Atabasin, which was twice the moon's diameter, reached Shinvat, or the border of the Earth's uh, vortexian uh, spin or atmosphere. You dig what I'm talking about? It is the spin of the Earth's vortex. It rents, it reached Shinvat, right? Which, which is which is the border of our atmosphere, which is past the moon. Our, vor our Earth vortex carries our moon vortex in a sub vortex called a warp. Okay. Now look, they say this atavasic was like a sea of fire. Just try to wrap your mind around what you're seeing, y'all. Think like a. Uh, Think like the Atlantic on fire. And it's moving down upon you. You dig what I'm talking about? Twice the size of the moon. And they making it seem. The border of the Earth's vortex just beyond the orbit of the moon. Here the ship halted for hours, for four hours, excuse me, and then began to descend and rapidly, fearful to behold, becoming more scarlet within the vortex, but growing larger and definite in shape. Look at this. And lo and behold, when Adivasa drew near, it was in the form and configuration of the brides and bridegrooms. They on they on the um on the ground in the lower heavens, arraigned in a new Ethereum clothes. They about they brought the bridegrooms. They done made it past the third resurrection. They about to get up out of here, go to the Ethereum realms. They in like groups, but in the group, the group would be wearing one color, right? But the group will be in a big triangle or a big square or a circle or a heart you know what i mean and the ship is flip-flopping changing like them it got signs on the bottom that represent them how do you know that's like you riding down the street and you saying man you know you got a red car and, and you say man i feel like having a, ba a baby blue car today and you could just flip your car. You could flip your car to match your, your, your outfit. And lo and behold, when the Atavasa drew near, it was in the form and the configuration of the brides and bridegrooms of Jehovah. It had 50,000 curtains and 100,000 banners and a, the host within the ship seven million souls already with this woman first of all this is a sister let's get it let's, let's get this, this this a woman here this ain't god this goddess y'all gonna learn seven million souls let me see what i can let me see if i can uh, Let me get back to the chat. Let's get back to it real quick. Yeah, 50,000 curtains and 100,000. Let me take that off of there real quick, y'all. Excuse me. 
It had 50,000 curtains and 100,000 banners. And of the hosts within the ship, seven million souls, each bore a streamer of phosphorescent light, which together were all were of all colors. How can it be all colors? Shades and tints and arrayed in symbols of the name Apollo. Unlike all other Ethereum ships of fire that had as yet visited the Earth's atmosphere, it was provided with openings in the bottom. Look at this. She got the Maybach roof on the bottom. She clowning. She got the Maybach roof on the bottom. You know what I'm saying? She got her lights in her ship, not on her roof. It was provided with openings in the bottom, 500,000 of them, which were the places of interest and exit. So you can come in and out these mugs. And the openings were studded with crystals of ceaseless fire of all conceivable colors, shades, tints, sizes, and shapes, curves, circles, angles, crescents, and so on. And up within the openings were the crystal and opaque chambers provided for their heirs of their third of the third resurrection. And yet within these chambers, there were reports of the guardian angels of the lives and the good work previously done by every man and woman of all of the two billion who were to ascend to Jehovah's higher heavens. But listen, but in all the records, there was not one recorded evil thing or dark deed or selfish thought. So it's recording thoughts too. Mm. Who recording them? The Ashar? For of these things, the ascending host had long since purged themselves. Look at that. You got that coming too. You got that coming for a show. The higher heavens, man. That's our inheritance, man. We're not trying to stay here bond with none of these gods, man. I don't even want to be here with them on the lower level. I'm trying to hit the second second at us in the atmosphere instantly. I want to go to the second resurrection. I'm trying to be right off top. I don't want to be here no longer than I got to be. Real talk. For of these things, the ascending hosts had long since purged themselves till they were gems of pure light of the father of all. High up in the ship were the beams and the network of timber, ropes and arches, and around the whole ship was the photosphere of its power, so that the whole Atavasi was like a crystal ship within a globe of fluorescent fire. The fire is on the outside, y'all. And yet, in fact, the ship was the true light told you and the angels and the angels the light of that light while the photosphere was really the shell of darkness made reflective dang what's listen jehovah be clowning this the stuff he give to the to the ethereum god you know what I mean? This what this what we got to look forward to. You dig what I'm talking about? I'm gonna be dipping, man. You dig what I'm talking about? Who coming with me, man? We about to be out. <laughs> you dig what I'm talking about? Come through, scoop, scoop everybody up, boy. We, yeah, we, we yo, you got the yo, okay. Let's go. We out this mug. 
You did what I'm talking about? Soon as possible. Y'all uh, got to be crazy. You dig what I'm saying? Let me get up here. This then was the size of the adoration. Listen to this. I had to I had to read this a couple times. I didn't uh, I got it, but I didn't get it at first. Right? This then was the size of the adoration. Remember, it's twice the size of the moon in diameter, right? Of the photosphere, right? The diameters. This is the, the light part of the ship, right? The Ethereum, uh, or what you would call the, the lit atmosphere of the ship. The diameters east and west, right? And north and south were 2,000 miles. That's twice the size of the moon. And it was 7,000 miles high. And the ship within it, this is a ship in a ship. <clears throat> and the ship within it was 100 miles east and west and north and south in diameter. And it was 200 miles high. That, that that threw me off for the first couple times that I wrote that, that I read that. You dig what I'm talking about? How it was written in the ship, but then it was 100 miles east and west. So it was 100 miles wide, right? But, but it's also 100 miles north and south in diameter. So it's globular. It's round. The ship round, sort of. But it's coming down like these streamers and look like a sea of fire and it was 200 miles high as the earth listen this is dope as the earth is opaque which means you can't see through it with a transparent vortex around it right can't see our atmosphere can you no so the opposite is the case regarding the structure of the ethereum out of acid being light and habitable within as well as without this blew my mind like the ethereum worlds in the firmament what you can live in them and without them How? you can live on the surface and under the earth what is they saying a watch be crazy as Jehovah makes world and sends them forth in places of his firmament, so in imitation of him, his Ethereum gods and goddesses make at a basis to, trans to traverse space from star to star. From one Ethereum uh, region to another, man, who trying to light up some of that seven and hit Saturn with your boy? You dig what I'm talking about? Who trying to hit, who trying to hit Saturn with your boy? You dig what I'm talking about? You know I'm blowing some of that Ethereum gas. You dig what I'm talking about? I'm blowing the basis of the universe. <laughs> you dig what I'm talking about? Gonna be up there. You dig what I'm talking about? Bouncing in the in the in the in the big boy at a basic. Huh? Have a have an Ariaka and a seraphim. You dig what I'm talking about? Traveling behind this an aeroship. You dig what I'm talking about? We in the nebula, baby. Out of this thing. You dig what I'm talking about? It's some light up there. It's some light up there you can't even believe. If, if I even could explain it, you wouldn't believe it. You dig what I'm talking about? Should I bring this thing out before we go? I want to show you something, right? I, I, should, yeah, I guess I'm going to bring it out. Let me bring it out. Should I bring it out on another show? Well, this is Nimrod. And I could, uh, hold on. Let me, let me try to bring this out real quick. Let me stop sharing.
Let me stop sharing. Let me stop sharing. Um. Oh. I guess I'll do this one. Okay. All right. We can use this one right here. I want to show y'all something, man. It's, I don't believe in coincidences. Right? Let me show y'all this. Let me show it with you. Y'all see that? All right. This is the genealogy of Adam, right? But many of the stories, right, we get are told in allegory. So with the understanding, right, that we know Noah is a man right we know llama is a man i mean uh we know noah is not a man excuse me Noah is not a man noah is a time right ham shem and yafit are times this is a a uh a, a, a half time a half time a half time or 600 years then the flood noah is a time 23 153 bc 17 arc cycle right but have you ever noticed right lamech lamesh methuselah methuselah enoch enoch erit jared methuselah Methuselah, Canaan, Canaan, but then there's Enos and Seth. Okay, let me show y'all something real quick. This is this is, when I when I figured it out, it blew my cap. You dig what I'm talking about? One second, y'all. Yeah, okay. I'm, a, I'm in LA. I go on my e, my own Ethereum sour. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm in Michigan, and you already know what's crack. You know what I mean? Y'all got all the genetics and you got the perfect climate. We got the best growers. But, uh, I want y'all to peep something real quick. All right? Can I blow that up? Is there a way I can eat? Can I blow that up? Oh, I guess that's the best I can get it, right? You got to grab your phone. Get you, get you a calculator so you can see this. You did what I'm talking about. Now, if you take into account the time Oak says... that it is right and understanding these are 
time patterns. Now I want you to remember this name. Lamech. 770 years. 77 years. Methuselah. 969 years. Right? Enoch. 365 years. Right? But then you would have Jared, right? Because Enoch actually over here comes before Jerry right back to the time of Cain right boom 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 these five right here you dig what I'm saying and you can look at this as over here under Adam and Seth being higher spiritual uh iron like thought and way and living and Cain, drunk, uh, low, earth. You dig what I'm talking about? So the, the stories of the earth would come through Cain. Now watch this though. If you take for a fact, right? Let me show you something. Let me show you. If you, if you come with the theory, right? Or we know where are we starting from? We're starting from a time, right? Of the beginning of the flood, 22553 BC. Correct? Let me show, let me show this. Let me let me show uh Okay. 22553 BC or 16 600 years into the 17th arc cycle, right? We got the flood coming right then, right? But now we know Noah is a time. So what's Noah daddy? Lama. So if you go negative 22553 BC, go on your phone. I want you to see this. This is mathematics. This is time, and then you then you minus because we going back in time. The seven hundred and seventy seven years of Lamech's life, right? And then minus the nine hundred sixty nine years of Methuselah's life, right? And the 800, excuse me, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, minus the 895 years, right, of uh, Methuselah, minus the 962 years. Right, the, the 600, the 900, excuse me, and 62. I keep saying it wrong 962 years of it, right, and minus the 365 years of the life of Enoch, right? If Using the timetables of prophecy, right? I would now add or minus 33 years or one generation. Watch this. Boom, boom. Where does that end us up? That eats up the 3,400 year time span that it takes to get from the 16th arc cycle or the arc of Arbrook on the neph down to the flood so the stories being told are from the 16th to the 600th year 
or 22 553 bc and if you add up the sons of cain who they how long they say they live it is exactly and it takes you to one year before 26 553 you have 26 554 which would have took you one year really into the arc of saga 15th arc cycle 16th arc cycle right here 26 553 if you add up Lamech, hold on, let me show you. Let me go back. Let me show you. Here you go. You add up Lamech, 777 years. Methuselah, 969 years, right? These are semi dance. And once you understand how the times of light in an arc cycle work. You just got to know where to put it. Remember, look, he got less kids than him. They got the same name, though. We know this 900 and 800 and you did what I'm talking about. Then another 900 in an arc cycle ain't gonna, don't work like that. But if you take the llama, the 777 years of llama, right? The 969 years of Methuselah. The 895 years of Mahujael. The 962 years of Iraq and 365 of Enoch leads you to the beginning of the arc cycle. Hold on. Leads you to the beginning of the arc cycle right here. 26,553 BC. Just adding up the time backward. This is why there's so many great times in there, but there's lesser suns. Because I needed to eat up all these time in lesser people. The timetables of prophecy are undefeated. Y'all better get with it, get hip. Get with it, get hip. Do it for yourself. Lead you right here to the Ark of Art Brook. When everything, when they say it start going wrong, start going wrong right here. Bad, bad, bad. Under the Ark of Neph. So Ape had to come in and save the day. He punched the planet in the mouth. Had his little girl alongside him and Josiah too. He was showing out. Hey, for showing out. That's my dog. Hey, man. he was a G man. I like Osiris. Cynthia Maj. You did what I'm talking about, but I ain't gonna lie. I'm a street cat, man. I want to talk to Dolph Gabriel. I want to talk to Luamon. You did what I'm talking about. You know who else would be an interesting dude to talk to? Yatante. Yatante would be an interesting dude to talk to. Why did he come up with his heavens like that? The, the, the happy hunting ground type, holographic, like what made him, you dig what I'm talking about? Because it, 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 it's crazy. But with the timetables of prophecy, right? See, you can't possibly think you're going to end up in the right place if you don't start in the right place. No matter if all the math is correct in between, if you don't know where to start and why to start at a certain place, then you can't even prove your theory because your God ain't taught you how to tell time. Uh-oh.
and bring you right here. You think that's a mistake? Add the times up. You did what I'm talking about? Add the times up. Hold on, let's go back. Do I need to do it again? They might not have got it. Negative two, negative 22, 553 BC, right? Then you minus, because you're going back in time. The 777 years of Lamech's life. The 969 years Oh, excuse me, of Methuselah's life. You did what I'm talking about, the 895 years of Mahujan the 962 years of Edit, and the 365 years of Enoch brings you right to Cain when man Started on his descent. 16th arc cycle. Right? Right here. Right here. 16th arc cycle. 3400. It was a 3400. And then look. The span of the time. That it takes to get to here to here. Is in the name. How you think I found it? I just knew where to start. Brought me raw way back here from 22153 BC because it's a flood. This is a marker in history. You dig what I'm talking about? Many things start out after this date. The ions go extinct off of this date, 22553 BC. They don't go extinct off this 19553. Or this 21, they go off this day that, that, that the flood happened on 2,400 years. You dig what I'm talking about? They say 20,000 years from the Ark of School. Huh? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? That was a little something with the timetables of prophecy, man. I just wanted to bring that out while we was uh into the old all of a Sean kick. You dig what I'm talking about? While we was over there, you know, chitting and chatting that up. You dig what I'm talking about? This is another good picture of a Sean. Let me see how do you do that? Can I blow it up? Well, we finished up Nimrod, right? Arch enemy to the last of the Raphaim, King Og of Bashan. Right there. Look at Canaan, Moab, Mop, Sihon, right? Sihon, we find out Sihon is who, brother? Og. Mm -hmm. They're right next to each other. Amun, Canaan. Amun is Baal, too. The god Amun is Baal. Usurp that name. You dig what I'm talking about? So. Man, it get deep, man. Definitely get deep. You dig what I'm talking about? But check it out for yourself, man. They say the world is a cycle and everything runs off mathematics, man. If it don't make sense, it's a lie in it. You dig what I'm talking about? But this one's a good one, though. Can't lie. Can't lie, this was a good one. Nimrod, part four, Cosmonia, 
You dig what I'm talking about? We going nebular. You dig what I'm saying? Um, it's love and light. You dig what I'm talking about? GIT, man, we gods in training. You know what I mean? The higher the spirituality, the higher the ability to perceive. The higher the spiritual rate, the faster we are seeing. You dig what I'm saying? To the homie West Coast, homie Dub P. Creator gang, gang, me, shit, and head out. You dig what I'm talking about? See, Law still holding on in there. That's my baby right there. I love you, boy. Love you, King. You dig what I'm talking about? You gonna be in the next Owaspi. That's word. That's word. Well, me and the butterfly vortex gonna fly up out of here, man. We gonna get back to the atmospheric heavens, you know what I mean? We was burning some of that ethereum. <laughs> you dig what I'm talking about? Some of this atmospheric. <laughs> you dig what I'm talking about? And um, as always, man, love, light, power, wisdom, cosmon. And y'all know what I do, right? Y'all know what I do, man. Cosmon in. Cosmon. And oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it up there. Yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you breathing rarefied air, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it up there. Yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you breathing rarefied air. Just that job yeah. theft, that child main, that papa bull, that tau main Since the sun cell in the arc of Wayne, my brain moving like tau saying So ass above, it's so below, that up and that down thing This flow is atmospheric, I call that a ground game See water is knowledge, so if I'm teaching, you're learning So how your God make a sun without vortexing and current See the pattern is ponic, I'm reaching out for my people Oh watch me flow through your speakers, you feel the force of the eagle And when the force gets the eagle, I'm taking off like the eagle Police popped the pastor yesterday for pushing put eco. My DNA is Moshe. Mix that thing with higher water. My spirit rate is OTN. It's just a higher order. Got more light than Kavita. Rap a lot just like Tila. Went from Santa to Saint. Shout out my big homie Sila. Got more torque than the sports car. Got more work than the door stop. And the first million I make, I'm giving the doctor my oh yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it. Up there, when you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. When you breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Tell me how you feeling when you feel it up there. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. When you breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Super seven in my rites and ceremonies. I'm married to Jehovah, holy matrimony. Confucius say in the words of Caillou Before you hit the tomb be a bridegroom I Only got one question for Miss Susan B okay. On how to last Ahu when it's now a angui Blame my inspiration I'm just thinking thoughts But in the way of God's we gon' keep it short Why Jesus wanna kill me Matthew 10 34 just a couple questions that I'm needing to know Oh, watch me flow, it's so potent Set the vortex in motion Super 7, I'm floating across the Aegean Ocean Know oh, you a Muslim now, so I guess you make it a lot Well, I'm a Israelite, I'm a Mickey met the Shiva uh, Got Moses on the bumper, super slap off in my spaceship photosphere So I stay lit, peace and light, to the faith is so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, put that Super 7 in the air Tell me how you feel it when you feeling up yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. When you breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Tell 
tell me how you feeling when you fill it up, yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied, yeah. When you breathing rarefied, 